Hi, it's Adam from Affinity Energy, and I wanted to do a little bit today about module mismatch and how it affects uh, energy production and power production in a solar power plant. Some of this stuff isn't super obvious if you're not really used to building and designing a module string configuration for a site. Uh, you might not appreciate why things are put together the way they are. So. The thing that I think we all know is normally you've got strings of modules wired together in series. And I just said for 325 watt modules, we've got 20 modules in a string so that it makes the math for me a little bit easier. 20 modules at 325 watts is 6,500 watts of power from this particular string. And module mismatch, what it does is it says, well, if somewhere in here we've mixed in a 300 watt module instead of a 325 watt module, um, the difference here, it's not just a 25 watt loss in power. This 300 watt module actually brings all the other modules down to its level. And now we've got 20 modules at 300 watts or 6,000 watts. So we have a 500 watt loss, even though there's only a 25 watt difference in one module in the string. So it's very important to keep modules of the same bin class together in strings um, because one little tiny error is going to have a significant impact on the amount of power that comes out of this. Uh, the other thing that happens here is uh, you might think, well, okay, I've got a bunch of strings with 19 modules, and then I've got room over here. I want to put in a couple strings with 20 modules instead of 19. And what happens is that because the combiner box where everything comes together, the voltage of all of these modules is going to go to the most comfortable place. The inverter is going to force it to the point in which the maximum amount of power is coming out of the combiner box. That has a given amount of current and a given amount of voltage. It's usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 750 volts at something, well, each string will contribute between five and six amps. But if you have a couple extra modules and add them to the end of the string, that would try to push the voltage for that string up, but this combiner box overall won't let you push the voltage up. So it'll actually force it down here, but the current will be lower and the voltage will be, it would try to be higher. And the area under this curve is a little bit smaller. It's less power than you would have if you were at your max power point. So 6,500 watts, adding a 325 watt module won't increase it by 325 watts. It might actually decrease the output from that string. So it's critically important to get all of the strings, all of the modules in balance in the DC design of the power plant. So just as a final thought, normal when you normalize the data, uh, what you might see is um, taking the average current per string from each combiner box in your plant. If you have a very small difference from one to the next, over time, this difference might not be super impactful. But these little tiny differences here, this little tiny difference here, and these little tiny differences here, will add up. And something as small as one missized module or a module with a crack will have an effect on the amount of output from the combiner box in total because that one small change is trying to move everything in that combiner box around on its max power point. And uh, those things are hard to troubleshoot and detect with a normal SCADA system because you're really looking at 195, 200 amps at a time. So normalizing of data in order to find those very small differences is critically important. This is really the only way you could see it at a macro level unless you went out and put individual instruments on each of the individual strings to try to quantify exactly what their current contribution was back to the combiner box. So the other thing that isn't obvious but you might pick up on here is module mismatch going from 325 to 300 back to 325. That's a rather dramatic difference from one to the next, but 
This module that's underperforming could be coming from a cause as small as a cracked module or uh, a big some hydraulic fluid that got left in the construction process and a soiling condition that is affecting one module amongst the string. That will have the same effect as having a mismatched module. So thanks for watching. Uh, again, this is Adam Baker with Affinity Energy, sharing a couple of my brain droppings with you regarding the module mismatch. And I'll be back with some more content pretty soon.